As we've already explained in our previous video, a manual transmission consists mainly of a gear pair and a clutch. While the traditional automatic transmission uses a planetary gear and a torque converter. When we decide to buy a new car, the question is always the same. Should I choose the manual or automatic transmission? These two technologies represent one of the most relevant part and they affect the dynamic characteristics of a vehicle. In this video, we will explain how manual transmissions work and we will show different types of automatic transmissions. An internal combustion engine produces torque, power, and optimum performance only within a limited speed range. For this reason, the transmission, which converts the engine's power to momentum, which drives the wheels, must be equipped with several gear ratios that must be engaged one after the other as the speed of the car increases. In this way, it is possible to vary the speed of the vehicle while keeping the internal combustion engine within an ideal rotation speed. More than 10 years in industrial supplies have led Jaws to become a qualified partner for some of the most important companies in the automotive industry. Now, let's take a look at various types of transmissions. Let's start with the manual one, which is the most common type of transmission in Europe. The manual gearbox directly involves the driver who has to operate the gear stick in order to engage every single gear while driving. Cars equipped with a manual gearbox are usually cheaper and low maintenance. By fully pressing the gear clutch pedal, the clutch disc moves away from the flywheel, thus disconnecting the rotation between the engine and the gearbox. The pairs of gears of the primary and secondary shaft are always meshed with each other, but one of the two is not directly connected to its shaft. By moving the gear selector to first gear, the free gear is connected to its shaft. At this point, by releasing the clutch pedal, the gearbox primary shaft reconnects to the engine and the car moves. In order to change gear while driving, the free gear of each pair is equipped with a synchronizer that allows the primary shaft to synchronize its speed with the gear. With that in mind, we can now shift into second gear, third gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear. Reverse differs from other gear ratios because it has an extra gear which is interposed between two other gears. In this way, the secondary shaft will rotate in the opposite direction. If you want to learn more about manual transmissions, you can watch our previous video. The automatic transmissions, on the other hand, provides much more comfort for the driver who no longer has to operate the clutch and gear stick. This is why there's no clutch pedal in automatic cars. You just need to use the accelerator and brake pedal. The transmission system, in fact, senses when it is necessary to change gear and does it automatically. Driving an automatic car also allows you more time to focus on the road ahead, so this might be the safer option for many drivers. The semi-automatic transmission is the simplest type and consists of a normal gearbox controlled by actuators, which in turn are driven by the control unit. Depending on the speed of the vehicle, these actuators determine when it should shift gears and changes them using internal oil pressure. Generally, this kind of transmission is also possible to manually select a gear using a lever or using paddle shifters usually attached at the back of the steering wheel. The main advantage of this type of transmission is the low production cost compared to other types of gearboxes. The most popular automatic transmission is one with elliptic gear train, which is also very common in the US. This type of transmission is able to achieve smooth gear shifts, but unfortunately, it has a low yield, as well as a higher purchase and maintenance cost compared to other types of automatic transmissions. The elliptic gear train differs from others because it uses planetary gear combination and a torque converter instead of gear couplings and a clutch. In this planetary gear set arrangement, 
we can notice that there are two inputs and one output. If we vary these two input speeds, we can achieve a different output speed. By adding another set, we can notice that the carrier, which is the output of the second set, is connected to the internal ring gear, which is only one part of the inputs of the first set. This coupling forms a simple automatic two-speed transmission. Two clutch packs are arranged on the internal ring gears. When the clutch pack of the first set is pressed, it stops the movement of its gear ring, which is the first input, but not that of the sun gear, which is the second input. In this way, the sun gear moves the planet gears and the carrier, and we will get the first gear. By releasing the clutch pack of the first set and pressing the second set, the carrier, which is the output of the second set, will be able to rotate the ring gear of the first gear, giving a greater speed at the exit of the first set, and we will get the second gear. More sets form the other gears, and if they were activated altogether, they form further ratios. So with just three sets, we can get six gears and one reverse gear. Shifting is almost instantaneous. This allows to decrease the loss of acceleration between one gear and another. Instead of the clutch disc, the automatic transmission has a torque converter, which automatically disconnects the engine from the gearbox when the vehicle is stationary and reconnects the two parts during acceleration. It is composed of a turbine, immersed in a fluid, to gradually transmit the torque. Unfortunately, this device is not very efficient at low speed. The dual clutch transmission is another type of automatic gearbox. It is common among sports cars and is extremely fast and eliminates the loss of power between one gear and another. The only disadvantage is its higher cost. As for the manual gearbox, there are pairs of gears always meshed with each other, with the free gear of each pair equipped with a synchronizer. Dual clutch transmissions is therefore very similar to the manual one, with the difference that the gears are mounted on two different coaxial shafts, one for the even gears and one for the odd gears, connected at two different clutches. When we're driving in first gear, the second gear sleeve and synchronizer are already engaged. Then the first clutch is released, and at the same time the second clutch is engaged allowing to shift to second gear. This procedure is repeated for all gears, ensuring a very quick gear shift. If you found this video useful, please let us know by leaving a like and a comment. You can also share it, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find out our next projects by visiting our website, jawscompany.com.